part D questions for lesson four on page 90. So number one asks, tells us just to describe an orange. Um, so if there's not even a question word, this isn't even a question. Um, but if we were going to ask it as a question, uh, we could say, what is an orange like? So describe an orange. So if we go back um, and look in that first paragraph, we can describe it. It says, um, if we're describing something, we need, and particularly like a food, we want to say what it looks like, what it tastes like, um, so the different parts of it. So we would say it's sweet and juicy, because that's describing, that's telling us the taste. And then what it looks like, it tells us they're in sections. Um, they do not, some of them don't have any seeds, and some have thick skin, and some have thin skin. So almost all of the first paragraph is a description. Now we don't have to rewrite the whole first paragraph. You can just say sweet and juicy, in sections, um, some have thick skin, some have thin skin. Something like that is, is perfectly fine to answer that question. Number two, do all oranges have seeds? So that question is testing our reading ability a little bit more than what we were used to. Do all oranges have seeds? So there's no sentence in the reading that directly says all oranges have seeds or all oranges do not. But let's look at that third sentence, first paragraph. So if we look at that sentence, actually, I'm sorry, it's the fourth sentence, first paragraph. It says some oranges do not have any seeds. So do all oranges have seeds? No, because it tells us some oranges do not. So of course the answer to number two based upon that sentence has to be no. Number three, describe an orange tree. So we have another question asking us about an orange tree. So really uh, that could say what is an orange tree like? Um, so describe an orange tree. So our key word um, or words in that sentence is orange tree. So question number one didn't ask us about a tree, orange tree, just an orange. So now we need to look for what is the paragraph that talks about an orange tree. First paragraph, no. So our first paragraph doesn't talk about an orange tree. There's no way we can use the first paragraph to answer the question for number three. But if we look at paragraph two, look at that first sentence. The orange tree is beautiful. Oh, okay, so now we've got a paragraph talking about the orange tree. So just as a reminder, when you're answering questions about a reading, um, in this case, that wasn't even a question. You need, we need to look at key words that help us direct our focus back to the reading and where we should look to find our answer. So if our question or if our statement is asking us about an orange tree, we need to be looking for a paragraph that talks about an orange tree. Um, so that second paragraph, so if we're describing an orange tree, we could say, oh, it's beautiful, has lots of shiny green leaves, small white flowers smell very sweet. That would describe it for us. So that second paragraph gives us a good answer to it. Question number four, where did orange trees probably come from? So where is one of those nice question words that we should all recognize? Where is talking about a location or a place? So where? So we need to look for a place or a location in the reading. Paragraphs 1 and 2 don't talk anything about location. So let's look at paragraph number 3. And if you look down, it says the orange tree probably came from China. Oh, got our answer. So all we need to do is write China for number 4. Number five, who plants wild orange trees? So that asterisk tells us we can't find that answer in the reading. We just need to think through what that question is asking. So who plants wild orange trees? So our key word in there is wild, wild orange trees. Um, and if we look at that sentence that talks about them, it says many different kinds of wild orange trees grow there today. Now, what did we say the word wild means? And if you even look at the book, it says wild means not planted by people. 
So who plants wild orange trees? No one. <laughs> No, that's the point. Wild orange trees cannot be planted. That's why they're wild. So our answer would have to be no one because we know that something that is wild or grown in the wild is not um, taken care of by anybody. And if we look at question number six, how did Europeans learn to raise oranges? So now our question is directing us to Europeans. We need to look in our reading where it talks about Euro Europeans. Um, so it says, farmers in other parts of Asia and the Middle East learned to raise oranges from the Chinese. Then they taught Europeans. So who is they? Because that they is going to answer our questions. Then they taught Europeans. Is it the Chinese? Or is it farmers in other parts of Asia and the Middle East? If you look at that carefully, it says farmers in other parts of Asia and the Middle East learn to raise oranges from the Chinese. Then they taught Europeans. We've got a progression here. So we start with the Chinese. They teach farmers in Asia and the Middle East, Asia and the Middle East. Then Farmers in Asia and the Middle East teach Europeans. It progresses. So for that question, how did the Europeans learn to raise oranges? Well, they were taught by farmers from Asia and the Middle East. Number seven, how did the United States get orange trees? So it's a process, a how. Now we're looking for United States in here. Um, that will direct us to our answer. And it says, the Spanish planted orange trees in the New World, North and South America. They took them to Florida first. Well, we should know that Florida is in the United States. So we don't actually see the United States written out, but we do see Florida, and we know that Florida is in the United States. So how did orange trees get to Florida? Or how did they get to the United States? And it, it's from the Spanish because it says the Spanish planted orange trees in the New World. So we could say the Spanish brought them, they planted them. Number eight, what does orange mean? And if we look down, it says in English, orange means both a fruit and a color. So it can mean fruit and a color. Last question with an asterisk. So remember, we had to think of the answer on our own. Why did people in Saudi Arabia eat dates instead of oranges? Well, we have to think, okay, why would they do that? So probably it would be because they cannot grow oranges. They can grow dates, but they cannot grow oranges. That would be a good answer choice for that. All right.